Hello guys, how's it going? My name is Dal, and the next WoW update of 11.07 has recently come out up for testing over on the PTR realms for the War Within expansion, which allows us to get a glimpse at this next upcoming update and test out a couple of the new features from brand new gearing and catch-up opportunities to a brand new island that is being put up for 11.07, plus some of the not necessarily class changes, but for now only racial changes, as Blizzard is actually taking a second look at some of the different racials in the game and trying to balance them out a little bit. Some racials are very very popular like that of a night elf especially in pvp content or dwarves within dungeons and raids potentially but certain other racials like Draenei, Worgen, Zindalari, Volpera and even Magha Oryx have fallen behind when it comes to being viable when it comes to end game content and they're really just trying to pull up some of those lesser represented options a bit. And they recently dropped a full list of some of the racial updates arriving with 1107, likely with even more on the horizon. I wanted to give my two cents regarding all of these racial updates, highlighting which ones have seen the biggest improvements and which one of the few options could use a little bit more work. As always, if you want to see more regular updates for future patches like 1107 over on the PTR, be sure to follow the channel and subscribe, but otherwise, let's dive right in. So I'm going to highlight all of the different racial changes in an alphabetical order, starting with the Jonai and ending with the Zandalari. And part of the thing that they're really trying to pull off here with these changes is to help promote the use of some of the lesser represented options when it comes to race class options uh, in order to make them a little bit better for more types of content. And I will comment where I think they're doing a pretty good job and they're making some interesting changes and where I feel like they could probably do a little bit more in starting with the Draenei which generally has a fairly powerful racial option. Starting with Draenei their main racial that's been adjusted is Gift of the Naru which goes from a 3 minute down to a 2 minute CD. The racial itself is a generally strong racial when it comes to single target healing whether it is personal self healing or outgoing healing and the actual healing effect scales based on the caster's health so the more health you have the more healing you can provide to others so technically it's a little bit better as a tank if you throw it up on an other ally. That being said however while it's decent i don't really know bringing it from a three minute to a two minute makes it that much better i guess you do get to squeeze out a lot more uses out of it so it can be maybe potentially like almost like a, an extra external that you could apply on somebody but i don't really know i feel like so compared to some of the other options we'll take a look at they could have done a little bit more interesting stuff here i would have loved to give it an hour to maybe have like some kind of like a cleave component to it like strong single target on a healing on a primary target and maybe some kind of like offside healing on everybody else around them or anything like that or maybe an adjustment to some of their passive options but i mean they have heroic presence which is really the only thing that really i think makes them kind of sort of relevant because it is more primary stats which is generally good overall however i do think reducing the cooldown of gift of Naro, since it is a decent bit of healing is going to help it a little bit but i do think they could have maybe done something more interesting with the gift of the Naro, since they're even doing some passive replacements for some of the other racials i would have liked something a little bit more interesting done for Dronai specifically the next set of racials that's receiving a bit of a revamp is that of the high mountain tauren specifically a defensive racial called rugged tenacity rugged tenacity simply reduces all damage taken by a flat number that scales with your stamina which is kind of interesting all on its own instead of being like a one percent damage reduction for physical or magic damage to just have a set number where the damage is getting reduced based on the raw stamina so as a tank class the more gear you have the more stamina you have ideally you would have a better overall survivability just from rugged tenacity alone and what rugged tenacity does is it is a decent tank and alternative mostly from a perspective of if you get hit by a damage over time effect every one of those ticks of that dot gets reduced by 3400 every auto attack you get hit by also gets reduced every big ability hit also gets reduced but also aoe damage and and like fall off damage all of those things everything that you get hit by just gets reduced by a flat number which makes them a little bit more of a tanking choice or like thematically tanky with rugged tenacity plus mountaineer for additional versatility which has some offensive and defensive benefits plus bull rush which grants you additional crowd control which has been utilized by tanks as well as healers in order to grab some additional ways to control enemies that control damage that's coming at you but also at the same time the fact that it's a raw number it doesn't get buffed up by 50%, I still feel like it's maybe a little bit 
low to some degree. I think the fact that it scales with stamina is very, very interesting. And for classes like Warlocks and Death Knights, the classes that have some naturally more stamina than some of the others, those classes will probably be in a much, much better spot to actually get value out of it. That being said, though, we are playing a war within where you have millions of health and our characters are getting hit from millions of damage. So when you get hit by like a million hit from an ability and you reduce 3434 of that hit, it's like a drop in a bucket. So I guess it really just depends. Technically, it does make it a little bit better. I just don't think it makes it that much more consequential. I think, again, for classes like Death Knights or Warlocks, if you're just looking for a little bit of survivability, especially if you're looking from getting hit by multiple different sources of damage, having a consistent way to reduce some portion of the damage, I guess is better than not reducing it. But a lot of the times, the danger spots come from when you get hit by a really big ability and you don't have a way to dampen it or a way to recover from those hits. And I feel like this is where that racial really doesn't come into play nearly as much compared to if there was more sources of damage that constantly hitting you, which is where that racial would get a lot more value. So this is an upgrade, does make it better. I just don't really know if that'll make it, whether really that'll be enough to make how mounted a preferred option for many classes out there. Now, the next set of racials that's been adjusted is that of the Lightforge Adronai, and I feel like the changes here are actually kind of interesting in the fact. First of all, their ability of Light's Judgment, the main ability of the Dronai, now has a bit more scaling to it. First of all, they're increasing the range of this ability in terms of the width of the beam itself by 10 yards, and the visual size of the ability has also been notably increased. Light's Judgment also deals 40% more damage, which makes it quite a powerful hit that hits all targets around you, but now has a soft cap of a target, so this ability now has a different type of AoE scale with a soft cap, you technically no longer have uncapped damage, but now the damage is a lot better whether you use it on single target or a handful of targets, even at max level. I mean, that number is a lot, lot better for a ratio that has a 2.5 minute CD. So it is an upgrade in some regards, but it no longer has this like uncapped potential. But I think it overall is an improvement either way. Besides this, they've also actually changed one of their uh, racials from Holy Resistance to Holy Providence, which reduces Holy Damage taken by 1%, so you still maintain that defensive aspect, and now it also increases your healing done by 1%. This is the first time that I think we've gotten a racial that actually increases your outgoing healing, which technically now makes Lifeforge Jonai a little bit better for healing rolls, as it simply empowers all of your healing to be 1% stronger. 1% might not seem like a lot, and it really just isn't, but it is still a scaling value increase for all outgoing healing. I don't know if this will be enough all of a sudden to make Lightforged the go-to as a healer, but now if you want to make a healer on the Alliance and you pick a Lightforged for a little bit of damage, a little bit of healing, like a Desk Priest, for example, right? You're trying to deal a bit of damage, Atonement healing to heal others. I'm not sure if Light's Judgment will heal with Atonement, but interesting if it does, though. But Holy Providence does provide you a little bit overall healing output, which could be good as a tanking role, but also as a healing role. So I think if anything, it does give for a nice, interesting synergy that works with the Light Forge Jani. Now, the next set of racials that's on update is that of a Mako orc, which generally plays second fiddle to the original orcs, just because the racial is a bit more randomized. It gives you a random set of stats every time you use Ancestral Call. However, that has been changed in 1107. The stats granted from Ancestor Call are now increased by 30%, so now you can gain up to 6,500 of a secondary stat, which is a decent bit. This is a trinket's worth of a stat. This is a lot in terms of numbers. And instead of being completely randomized, it now is a bit more focused while still having a bit of this RNG to it. It now grants you a 6,570 at max level of one of your two secondary stats for 15 seconds. So it'll dip, actually change your stats depending on your class. So right now I'll play Outlaw Rogue. My stats are kind of all over the place. They're all very, very even in percentages, but versatility is definitely on the higher end. And normally my haste would be on a higher end too. So I'm not sure. I think it might actually use the numerical value of haste and versatility as my highest here in order to determine which one of those two I'd be getting. So when I do use it myself, when I press it, 
it can increase my versatility by 6,500, which is a huge benefit to my overall damage. For Outlaw Rogue, if you gave me haste, however, it'd be a little bit less good, but that versatility is a massive upgrade. However, for most classes, unlike unless you're an Outlaw Rogue, which has very, very specific breakpoints for haste, because this is a really, really weirdly designed spec, most classes will have at least two really good secondary stats to look forward to. Like, casters with haste means your casting abilities a little faster. Mastery generally amplifies all of your basic abilities and the main mechanic of your overall gameplay. Critical strike could also be good because you crit more often. Versatility can just amplify your damage if that is like how your class scales in. So for many classes out there, this is actually a pretty decent option. Because not only is it now more focused, so it doesn't give you a random stat that you don't desire, but it's also 30% more increased. It's a trinket's worth of a stat. It is very, very strong. So ideally, you could go out and form dungeons for trinkets such as Cardinal's Grace, for example, to just gain additional mastery. Or you could play a Macha Orc and possibly roll mastery as you maybe potentially best secondary stat during peak burst window for 15 seconds so this one i think is actually one of the bigger upgrades that i think is actually quite sizable yeah this time increase my haste which wouldn't be that great for my spec of outlaw but if i was assassination between crit and mastery both of them are really good subtlety versus mastery both of them are really good basically equally as good to one another so for most classes i imagine this actually would be quite a sizable increase so i'm actually a really big fan of this magar increase now the next race that got updated and actually this is probably one of my favorite allied races in the game that i played for the longest now has been the nightborn and i recently switched over to the drakthir just to give things a mix up a bit for this expansion but the nightborn rachel has been honestly one of the worst choices ever i literally play these guys mostly for the aesthetic because you can have the glowy fingertips the customization options are real really cool for them and the entire like race of the nightborn from legion are i think one of my favorites out there that being said yeah the racial options have never been all that good especially the arcane possibility which has gotten buffed up by a significant amount this time around arcane pulse has been buffed up by 300 percent as of 1107 ptr update so it does now up to 105 arcane damage but it deals damage to all enemies around you so in a pure aoe situation every target gets hit by aoe or just pure arcane damage and on top of it, they also upgraded the slowing effect of this ability to now reduce their target's movement speed instead of by 50%, now up to by 80%, though now it lasts for only 8 seconds instead of 12 seconds. Now, the actual numbers-wise, I think this is technically better as an ability on its own, because especially in a huge AoE situation, now you can use it in order to deal quite a bit of AoE damage, but that control element of it, I think, is what really makes it interesting. On the three minute cooldowns, it's kind of lengthy. Honestly, I would probably lower it down to 1.5, just because it feels more like a utility ability rather than a very powerful option. But the slowdown from a 50%, which most classes can slow enemies down by 50%. I mean, just hitting an enemy with a crippling poison in PvP slows enemies down by 60% as a rogue, so that racial just becomes less good on its own. But 80% is almost like a root type of a slow. It really is a significant slowdown of everybody around you. So from that angle, it does make it a little bit better. The AoE slow capability, which has some uses, niche uses, but definitely some uses in PvP. Like let's say your flag carrier is trying to run the flag to your base, but a bunch of people are chasing him. You leap in as a rogue, you use arc impulse to slow everybody down. You give them eight seconds just to be able to escape and make some distance while they're slow by 80%, which is a significant drop off in movement speed. But also in PvE content like Mythic Plus, you can now slow enemies down as the tank is trying to kite enemies out or in raids if somebody thing needs to be slowed you can now use it to properly slow an enemy and not a lot of classes have a slow of 80 percent i feel like that slow has some uses here and there i would have loved maybe for this to be a much shorter cooldown because it's just the, the damage is i guess it's a little better but it feels more like a slowing effect more than anything and i think a shorter cooldown i think would make it a little bit better in my personal opinion also, I would love for cantrips to be something that all of your group members can access because you basically can drop down mailbox for yourself at any time you want to. 
but no one else can see it or access it. I would have loved for cantrips, but if you make your Eldritch Grimoire, for other players to be able to see it and be able to interact with it so you could place a mailbox as a racial, I think it would have been an awesome quality of life adjustment. Now, the next set of racial that got buffed up quite a bit is actually that of a Void Elf, and they made it a lot, lot better than where it was. So the Void Elf racials are going to be two racial specifically that got changed up. The first one being the active ability of Spatial Rift, which is where you get to tear a rift into space where you basically sent out this crawling shadowy image that allows you to teleport to it after a little bit reactiving this ability allows you to teleport to the rift so what they did is they increase the moment speed of this rift at the moment speed it travels by 80 percent so you can reach its targets quicker the duration increased to eight seconds that gives you a window between where you can teleport to it and maximum range of the ability also increased by 35 yards this doesn't show up in the actual tooltip but it is there and what it is essentially does is it allows you to get a little bit extra movement speed you could see it and it looks a little different you can port to it it's a little bit better as a movement skill in order to be able to escape enemies or be able to reposition this has been utilized multiple times within pve content and pvp content primarily as an escape tool but sometimes as an additional mobility tool though there are some better alternatives for it but it's more of a defensive tool and actually quite good in pvp the fact that it travels a little quicker, has a bit of a better range, 8 seconds of a duration to it, I think makes it slightly better overall as a mobility ability. 3 minute cooldown on it still makes it super super niche in usages, this is why it feels like it's a defensive ability more than anything. Would have loved to see a shorter cooldown on it personally, but this is at least a better usage of the Spatial Rift ability. However, where the fun begins is in the passive one of Entropic Embrace passive, which has been adjusted with its proc rate, apparently made a little bit better, though they didn't really go into details as to how much better. But now, the passive will increase your healing and damage done by 5% instead of duplicating your damage, which was a weird quad formula they had to utilize that didn't really result in that big of a gain on damage, but instead it just grants you a buff of 5% more damage or healing for 12 seconds, so it's kind of essentially a big burst window. Now, this actual racial is potentially could be a very, very powerful option, but it really all depends on how often it procs. As whenever, let's say, you have peak burst available and a Tropic Embrace activates, the amount of damage you could potentially do during that very, very short window could be incredibly, incredibly good. Because there's a lot of burst classes out there, most classes play around burst windows and burst damage and burst abilities. Like majority of casters, majority of melee play around big burst windows. And if you can have this racial activate during those windows, 5% more damage while your peak capacity burst could be incredibly, incredibly good. Again, all depends how often the racial procs. Now that I've adjusted it, again, would have loved if they went into details as to what the actual adjustment was to its proc rate. And up next, we have the Volpera, which, depending on who you are, this is actually a popular choice among certain circles of WoW. But when it comes to endgame, I could see it. Technically, I always like the Nose for Trouble ability because it's a decent tanking racial, and it actually gains quite a lot of value for most tanks when they can play a Volpera. Though the racial they're really primarily highlighting here is the Bag of Tricks ability, which allows you to put up, pull up a chosen trick out of your bag. If you're highlighting an enemy or targeting an enemy, you deal damage to them. If you're targeting an ally, you heal them, but they wanted to make this racial a little bit better specifically. So Bag of Tricks healing and damage is being increased by 40%, so on a max level character, this damage is being upscaled to about 260 over heal or 175,000 damage, which is actually... A fairly solid number on an instant cast ability with a 1.5 minute cooldown. However, they wanted to make it even better because Bag of Tricks now decreases enemy movement speed by 80% for 4 seconds if you use it on an enemy, or it grants an ally 20% movement speed for 4 seconds, which makes it a very interesting choice. So now if let's say you want to be able to grant yourself or an ally movement speed, if you use the Bag of Tricks ability, you, if you use it on yourself, that movement speed could actually be quite a significant gain, depending on the situation. But PvE content, PvP content, there's a lot of usages for additional movement speed, but also the heal itself, the number it's, uh, by itself, is not the worst at the same time, plus a 1.5 minute cooldown 
can only make it even better. Like the fact that it's a short CD allows you to actually get a lot of uses out of it. And that's slow by 80%. We talked before with Nightborn how it's almost like a root like slow to a certain extent. And being able to single target almost root a singular enemy is actually kind of decent in fact it's a significant amount of a slow that you are going to notice and it is going to make a bit of an impact in situations where a slow is necessary so i think this is actually a very very good change and having it on a 1.5 meter cooldown which it's always been from the get-go makes it a very very usable racial and i would love to see some of the three minute racials and two minute racials get brought down a little bit like some of the ones we talked about earlier now another set of racials that's seen a significant upgrade is that of the worgen which have access to a human form but also a worgen form and when it comes to the changes coming out in 1107 one of the things they're adding is the arathi ears for the humans and culturans and i guess we find out as of this week that apparently this applies for the human worgen as well you can see the arathi pointed ears I don't think the Arathi have any Worgen among them, but it is still really, really cool that at least there's more customization options being added for more options than before. So this is something that is really, really good to see. As for the actual Worgen racials, they're not really seeing too many changes when it comes to actual combat racials. They still have Flare, which grants them a little bit more skinning. They have Viciousness, which grants a critical strike, a reduction, uh, Shadow and Nature damage reduction. Primarily what they're trying to do is change up the way that Dark Flight functions not really changing the actual movement speed but rather how it stacks up with other movement speeds basically dark flight will now will be able to stack with other movement speed effects and i'm just thinking to myself how was this not a thing before so if you're sprinting as a rogue as a worker and you press dark flight because your sprint has a higher movement speed than dark flight dark flight basically did nothing so it had very limited uses for it but now if you are sprinting or using any movement speed abilities and you use dark flight apparently those will now stack together so potentially it should give worgen the some of the best movement speed in the game especially if you got cheetah and dark flight happening all at the same time yeah it does seem like it actually stacks up it is a noticeable change in terms of movement speed so ideally if you are worgen as a rogue with 100% movement speed while sprinting, you should technically be able to achieve the fastest movement speed available outside of just playing a demon hunter or a monk, for instance. So this is a decent update overall. I actually like this a lot because mobility can be huge within PvP situations, within dungeons, within raids. Mobility can help you escape certain enemy mechanics and boss mechanics that normally you would have a hard time getting out of. So Dark Flight on a two minute cooldown, I think is actually it's a pretty decent upgrade in my opinion i don't think it's going to be enough to make everybody swap over to worgen all of a sudden but if you do choose to play worgen and you do play it in like some of the more competitive content that extra mobility can help you get in and out of places and this could be amazing for playstyles like warlocks and uh, death knights for instance that just don't start out with a great amount of mobility i guess technically death knights can always play right of the apocalypse but with how many frost death knights that are deathbringer that dark flight will actually gain quite a bit of value in that regard specifically and the last set of racials we could talk about is that of the zandalari which has seen quite a number of adjustments that should hopefully make him a little bit more playable first things first a regenerate and sees a significant set of changes normally this racial it is something that you can use but only as long as you don't take any damage from any ability because getting hit by an attack or even if a dot ticks down on you this ability gets cancelled immediately the change will regenerate so it no longer cancels two periodic effects so if you let's say get dotted up by another player in pvp and you get to run away and you need a heal or let's say if you are able to let's say you get dotted by a boss and you need a heal in the moment but you're not the one currently getting tanked by the boss if you just need a quick heal this will continue to generate healing even if you have a periodic effect in your character so that makes it a little bit more usable within pve content still not great for a tank but if you're a healer or a dps that isn't constantly taking aggro and if you can escape actually getting attacked regularly get being able to pick up a quick heal every three minutes is not the worst however because of the increased usability of regenerating they're also reducing its overall healing from 100 percent of your max health over six seconds down to 50 which is still a very solid heal half your health in a, a three minute cooldown is a pretty decent defensive like if you just need survivability at all costs this is a decent choice. However, another thing they also decided to update is Embrace of the Lower Racial Ability, which allows you to, as, as in Delari, if you're actually hanging around on the 
main pyramid of Zandalari, if you carefully notice on the sides of the actual uh, pyramid, you'll notice that there's a lot of shrines to a variety of different loa, like this would be a shrine to Kimbol, and it allows you to use the embrace ability to then embrace Kimbol, which can change your racial passive. Normally, Zandalari start with the Embrace of Paku, which allows your abilities to randomly grant you 4% critical strike chance for 12 seconds, which is a standard option that many players will just stick with because it's pretty good for all classes. But you could actually change it and depending on which lower you have and if you are aware of what their abilities are and you get a bit of a preview when you walk up, walk up to them. But all of these lower racials do change your actual proc rates into another effect, either a healing effect, damage effect, or a mix of both depending on the loa so they actually ended up changing up some of these loa that you can embrace with paku being one or rather kimbul rather being one of them with embrace of kimbul your damage and abilities have a chance to cause the target to bleed for additional bleeding over time this effect stacks up to three times and i think for a little bit of time this bleed used to count towards all effects above bleeding so technically arms warriors and feral druids have components that buff the effectiveness of bleeds i think kimbul used to be affected by this ability a while ago i am not sure if that is still the case however maybe potentially if it is still the case there could be some class benefits out of this like hunters for instance could technically do have a natural causes damage over time effects deal additional damage so if the bleed does get affected by talents a natural causes for hunters could actually affect it directly but they basically increase the Kimball proc rate with a bleed by 400%, so you're more likely to proc it, which could potentially be good, especially if it interacts with other racials, but even just the damage hopefully should make it a little bit better, possibly. Early sim numbers will give us more info if this is significant or not. Now, more than just one Loa has been buffed up, however, as a choice option for the Zandalari. One of the Loa will be a fan favorite of Wan Samdi. His effect is to grant you a Embrace of Wan Samdi, where you damage and abilities have a chance to deal shadow damage and heal you for 100% of that damage done. So a little bit of damage that also allows you to kind of leech damage off of the enemy. They increase the effect of this actual racial by 50 percent i actually decided to go and swap my rogue over to zandalari over in ptr took me a couple of attempts to do so just to see what kind of numbers we'd be looking at but based on the embrace of one somebody at max level at a full gear character or somewhat fully geared i'm not completely full gear myself but we're looking at about 19,000 shadow damage and if this procs enough that actually could be pretty decent the damage and healing is not super incredibly high but if it has enough damage equal to that of a trinket proc potentially that could be a decent choice as a zandalari i think i just wanted to make sure double check kimball numbers see exactly what that would look like so then you would have a bleed that hits for basically that of one somebody but could potentially stack up to three times that does make it a lot better and if they're increasing the proc rate of this to 400 percent if this has a better uptime than what's this could actually be really good i think actually I'm, I'm not starting to lean towards more of shrine of kimball potentially i guess one somebody would need to have good enough proc rate equal to that of kimball now the final lower that got any kind of changes is that of akunda which is a healer type of a racial option so embrace of akunda is an ability that allows you healing abilities to have a chance to heal the target for 169,731. And apparently this racial also scales with things such as attack power, but also versatility. I don't know if that translates also to spell power, but for some reason, at least in Wowhead, they have attack power as part of its leading coefficient. And they're increasing the healing by 300% and the chance for it to proc by 250%. So it looks like they're really just trying to equalize all of the racial procs for the Zandalari. So they all proc a little bit more consistently to one another. I'm going to take a stab at the dark and say that probably Shana of Akunda barely procs for a healer. So that 250 increase likely doesn't make it strong all of a sudden. It likely just places it on par with some of the other racial options when it comes to Zandalari Loa. But I'll be very, very interested to see what kind of sims and what kind of numbers we might be able to glean from once more sim-oriented players get a hold of the 1107 PTR update. But with that being said, however, I do want to thank all of you guys so much for checking out this update, and I hope you guys did enjoy it. If you did enjoy it or found it informative, go ahead and give this video a like. It would very, 
very much appreciate it join our desk community for any of the regular 1107 updates let me know all your thoughts in the comments down below and as always i'll see all of you guys in the next one